Okay, so today I'm going to be looking at receiving weather satellites on a Raspberry Pi 4. No reason it shouldn't work on a Pi 3. Just happen to have Pi 4s around. So the first thing that we need to do is install the normal uh, SDR or whatever type software uh, I use in RTL SDR Blog 3. You can use whatever you want, it's fine. And we need some software to run on it. Uh, I've got SDR plus plus and GQRX. For this demonstration, I'll use GQRX. There's a couple of other programs we're going to be using, one of which is GPredict, which is now available directly from the repository. And the other one is WX to image, which is not available from the repository. But uh, I'll include details on how to download that on the blog. So the first one that we need to set up is gpredict, just for the sake of argument. And in here, first we need to update the TLE data to make sure we've got all the satellites. No changes there. And the transponder data very rarely seems to get updated. And I've changed a few of the settings on this. I'll full screen it so you can see what's going on. It does come with some profiles already made. So you can open a module. And I've added a Meteor one. But you normally get amateur on the weather satellites. If I open this, it'll open it again, which is minor and niggle. And we can see that the satellites are there, ready and waiting. If we go into Edit Preferences, we can start at the top and enter our ground station location. This you can do with your latitude and longitude. You can do it with the Cambridge locator. Should enter your altitude as well. And I just happen to know that my local weather station is EGNX. So that's fine. TLE is set to update daily, which it does, or you can just do an automatic update. The modules. You can set various combinations of displays on here. Uh, it is possible to get one that has everything. Oh, my weather one. It's got everything on. It's managed to get the uh, polar coordinates going on at the same time. It's for any given module, here's where we select our satellites. You can just type in NOAA, it'll list all the NOAAs. If they have a minus sign next to them, they're not working. If it's got a P, it's at low power. I think most of those are working. And I managed to find this map, table, polar, and single sat wide, which suits my purposes because it shows me everything most of the time that it's working. There's a bit of duplication, but we know that the next NOAA satellite, NOAA 15, is due in eight minutes. And that's reflected down here. And we're really interested in what the when the elevations get above 25 uh, degrees. We need to connect this to a radio. I've already preset my radio, so I should have shown you that first. So in preferences, interfaces, I've got two, I've got GQRX. GQRX works on port 7356. Don't actually need to have those engaged. They are to turn the radio on and off at the appropriate times when it's above the horizon. In fact, I'll leave those on because I've been working with them on and it has been working fine. Also, I've got SDR++ set up. That works on port 4532. Left the other settings alone. The receive only. I will plan to try and transmit back to a satellite. And the predictor, I've set to minimum elevation of 25 degrees. Uh, my antenna is not very high up. I'm not going to get a good signal below there. It will receive it 
but it will not be a good signal. And I've changed these settings. I don't want to know the next 10 satellites. So maybe it might be useful over the next 10 days. And those I've left set as they are. We then need to set up our radio control. Uh, and to do that, I nearly really need to have the radio working. So, oh, a couple of other things that we need to set up then. I'm going to use GQRX for this purely because that's what I've been using for the most part. I'll get everything configured on it. Now, because this is going to be controlled by the software, the only thing that we need to make sure that we've done is to select a weather satellite, ideally. Any of them, it doesn't matter which. And I've set the bandwidth to 38,000. Should be about 35,000. But yeah, I've set that. That's a 35 kilohertz. We can zoom in on that signal a bit, but all will become apparent shortly. Start the radio. Click this button to engage remote control via TCP. Check that we've got it set to 7356 and we've got local host enabled here. These other settings are for me controlling it from the host computer because that's a Raspberry Pi. And I'm actually recording it from a Linux PC. So I'm actually going into it on real VNC. But it's all full screen and you can't see it. I'm running Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. And I found that the software is easier to install on the 64-bit version. You may have to compile from, uh, for, from source code on uh, the 32-bit version. So we've got two things going now. We've only got one more to go and we've got four minutes to do it in. So I'll just open these out and we can see clearly. Okay. So the next thing to do is set the radio control. Now with number 15 there's a known issue. I'm going to engage the remote control to GQRX. So now the radio frequency is going to be controlled from here. And number 15 we've got selected. HRPT, I need a different decoder for. APT, and it thinks it's on 137500. I can assure you it's not, it's on 620. And many an hour sitting watching that, waiting for something to happen, only to find out it's not on that frequency. And the next thing we need to do, if you go to my GitHub, you can download this weather script. The reason we need this weather, uh, weather script is that WX2Image, on its own, uh, in Linux, it cannot update the Kepler files. Kepler files are what the track of the satellites is in three dimensions in the universe, or certainly in relation to the Earth, and specifically to my location. So I made a script that will correct this by, because the script will pre-download it from uh, the, I can't remember the name of the website now, Celestrack. They moved from Celestrack.com to Celestrack.org or vice versa. So I made the script weather.sh and you'll see straight away, go to Celestrack.org, it downloads the new file and it opens the program. I've made it as simple as it can be. So every time you open the program, it will be updated. Now, because I've set up auto record, it's already aware the next satellite is 1376200. This hasn't sent any information to this yet. What I've done is I've gone into record. I've selected record and auto process, which you'll see working shortly. I want to create images, a movie and composites. I'm going to skip the movies. I'm going to do it when there's more than 5% of a total projection filled. I'm going to do it for images that are at an elevation of more than 25 degrees. That's 25 degrees above the horizontal. <coughs> the higher, the better, depending on your antenna. 
and more about that later. But then I'm going to click Auto Record and that'll put it in the mode where it's waiting. Oh, I wanted to show you something else. And the other thing that we've got is an accurate pass list. And the beauty of this one over the one on GPredict, GPredict tells us that it's going to be above the horizon at 1632. What it doesn't tell me is how high it's going to get. So on here, and I know the times are different, this is one of life's little annoyances that the times come out differently. I have set these to local time on both programs. So the maximum elevation is only 22 degrees. So the best trip pass is going to be 83 degrees and 1948. So we'll come back and do that one later, but just as a demonstration, this one is going to kick off any second. So I'm going to close that and put it back into auto record. So it's not likely that we'll get one. Okay. A few moments later. Okay, so we're about to get a direct overhead pass from NOAA 15. Just about to pop its head above the horizon. And with a bit of luck, when it hits a certain altitude, sorry, a certain elevation, and indeed, GQX is going into record mode automatically. Now, W extra image will pick up on this, and at the appropriate time, it will start processing the signal. Now, I've got the sound on in the background just then you can hear when the satellite starts to rise. It's about here on the uh, waterfall display, and there it appears. And just three set of vertical lines. There's about eight or nine of them. Can't hear it yet, it's buried in the noise. These signals are very robust. Ducking out as we get this horrible interference. There we go, that's probably clearer. And you start to see these pulses either side now appearing, dodging from side to side. It makes a very robust signal. Okay, so we still got 2.7k of Doppler effect as it comes over. It's up to 26 degrees where we start to expect a legible signal. And look here, as it's gone past about 25 degrees, it starts to improve dramatically. We're going to download the two raw images first. One of them is optical. I think the other one is infrared. It's an analog system, really. There's some digital data in there to do with the uh, tracking. We're going to get quite a reasonable image on this one, notwithstanding the pager. You can see the frequency is dropping continuously as we track the satellite. This is the fantastic thing about uh, it's GPredict that's doing the work. So each of these programs is doing many things. GPredict is telling you when the satellite's coming, it's tuning the radio automatically. WX2 image is receiving this audio signal, decoding it, turning it into a visual signal, then it's storing it so it can do additional processing on it. And GQRX, of course, is working in remote control mode. So there's so little that we actually have to do once we've started a pass. I've left this running for a couple of days at a time. And yes, my results have been mixed, but I need a QFH style antenna or a v, v dipole to improve the reception. I have got a V dipole, but I've not been able to get the uh, work on it when the satellites are coming overhead like they are now. Just show you where we are now. literally overhead so as it goes overhead because i've got a vertical antenna 
Signal will grow weaker. Don't panic, it's going to come back. We're at maximum elevation now, 63, 64. 180 indicates it's overhead. 66, 67. And then in a second, that'll start to count down. There we go. We got to 67 and now it's dropping. Moved around a bit, actually. Just likes to make a liar of you. A few moments later. And it's resynchronized again. The record is going to drop out any second. This is now 8 degrees above the horizon and we're still picking up something like a signal. If this was an audio signal, you know, you, it'd be great. You, you'd, you'd still be able to make contact. And then this other interesting signal has popped up alongside. On a previous track, this came up with NOAA 15. It's not NOAA 15 because it's on a different orbit now. And whatever that signal is, and it could be anything. It could be one of the Starlink satellites. There we go. It's now going into signal processing mode. That's still going. Not bothered about that. I'll turn the sound off. And here we go. I'm going to maximise this. Okay, so that's one of the signals. There, oh, there we look at that. So some of these are meaningless. It's processing each image. You can set as many or as little images as you want it to pre-process. And you can process it manually afterwards. I selected these uh, particular decodings from stuff that had worked for me previously. But it's doing more now. Oh, look at that. Not a perfect image, but it's one of the best ones. And that's an orthogonal image projection. That's wrapping around the curvature of the Earth. So it's as you would see it from space. Possibly from, I don't, I'm not sure it's from the satellite's point of view. But the satellite only tracks a thin line of image. The satellite doesn't see a big square of image. It sees a line of image. That's what's called a line camera. Something that's also used in physics. We have not got our maps though. Where's our maps overlay?